Hey guys, Beat the Pro is canceled everywhere. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, you can catch up on the Beat the Pro saga by watching the original Beat the Pro video. Then you can watch Beat the Pro is canceled. And then you can watch the Beat the Pro Aftermath live stream. And the live stream happened yesterday, which is basically a response to all the comments on the Beat the Pro is canceled video but unfortunately the live stream was interrupted by a horrible cell phone connection because i was stringing a racket by hand while talking about the video uh, just to make the video a little bit more entertaining and then i was going to use the racket and play a few points with milan but the coverage was horrible and the video is close to unwatchable so for any of you who dare to watch this video subscribe to intuitive tennis 24 7 you can watch the live stream there but many pieces of the video are missing because what happens with youtube when you live stream if there's an interruption the video gets automatically edited where that part is cut out so the video jumps all over the place so for that reason i want to make another video and explain to you what happened shortly after that live stream regarding beat the pro i received a lot of comments uh, with you guys asking me to teach you how to string a racket by hand and I'm hereby saying do not string your racket by hand get your rackets professionally strong I just wanted to demonstrate the old-school way of stringing rackets back in the day my dad used to string his wooden rackets by hand and I just wanted to show that this is possible by no means I'm going to teach you how to do this and by no means do I recommend that you do this so let me tell you a little bit of a summary of the whole beat the pro saga I know many of you guys know what happened, but I'm just gonna tell you guys who are watching this video for the first time. So Beat the, Beat the Pro was basically an idea. It was created by accident. The original video that I made wasn't titled Beat the Pro, it was titled, Can a Recreational Player Beat a Grand Slam Champion from the Past? For example, John McEnroe. That was a question that one commenter asked and I thought it was a great question. And I made an entire video based on that question. Naturally, throughout that video, I was explaining the difference between the recreational level and the high level. And naturally, I issued this challenge to some of my trolls, some of my haters online. And this snowballed into this huge thing where I was getting tons of requests. And this video did great. It got a ton of views, tons of engagement. And naturally, this seemed like a fantastic idea for a video series that was going to get a lot of views because there was a lot of interest. And what Beat the Pro is, is basically a situation where a student challenges the pro. And a lot of you guys in the comments think I'm talking about a professional player. No, pro in the United States stands for teaching professionals. So an um, instructor at a tennis club is referred to as a teaching pro. And that's what Beat the Pro means. I didn't come up with Beat the Pro. This is done, I think, in pretty much every single tennis club across the United States. And this is what I used to do. And naturally, I wanted to make a YouTube version of Beat the Pro where players can come challenge me on the court. We would record it. And if they happen to lose, they would pay for my time on the court. Now, a lot of you guys are confused by this model and somehow think that if the student wins that the teacher would have to pay the student no the student will get a tennis lesson regardless it's actually very valuable for a coach to observe point play which in turn the coach can use some of the information gathered in the point play session for future coaching or even coaching in that session so the student would never get paid but a teacher and a student would get a lesson regardless of the outcome of the Beat the Pro match. So in any case, like I told you, this video was very popular. I got tons of comments and naturally I asked people to DM me on Instagram if they were interested and I got tons of DMs. But unfortunately, it wasn't really the trolls or haters who messaged me. Messaged me. It was more my fans and a lot of them were at a level where the outcome of the match was going to be super obvious. So I was waiting for someone who was at least 5.0 level. And I thought I found the perfect candidate because the kid that I invited to the Beat the Pro session told me 
that it was beating D1 players, beating D2 players, and beating UTR 12s. So with this information, I kind of took him at his word. I didn't request a video. I didn't look up his name online. I'm, I guess, too naive in a way. I believed then, and he arranged a flight, flew down, and I really thought this was going to be a big challenge for me. I actually prepared for this match. I practiced, and I went to bed early. I cleaned up my diet. I wanted to perform at my best. And then when we were warming up after the first two shots, I knew what was going on. And what happened was the kid highly overestimated his own playing abilities and highly underestimated my playing abilities. And the match was over very quickly. And what happened after that, I planned to release this video on YouTube sometime in September. But the way I do things is in the following way. I have a private membership site where I feature a lot of premium content courses and, and such uh, private uh, Q&A's uh, things like that but I also will put all my YouTube videos on there that are unreleased so if you sign up for my premium membership site you can see around 10 YouTube videos that have not come out yet so I put that video which took me a long time to edit on my premium membership site I gave the kid a password so you can watch the video and after watching the video the kid did not like the way he looked on camera and asked me to remove the video I immediately removed it from YouTube when I got home after doing a lesson with him because he did take a couple of lessons after we played that match now it was very painful to remove this video I'll be honest with you because he agreed to do this challenge and this was gonna do really well on YouTube. It was going to get a lot of views and it was going to be a really entertaining match for you guys to watch. And the way I edited this video was so to protect the kid and not make him look so bad. I featured a lot of my aces. I featured me overpowering him from the baseline. So there wasn't really too many rallies. And the actual match footage was only maybe five minutes. And the rest of the video was me uh, talking to the kid before the match and then encouraging him and how He's going to improve his game after the match but the problem was that the kid was afraid of the backlash he was going to receive on social media that's why he wanted me to remove this video and i agreed with him that i should remove it from youtube i don't want any of my students to be harassed online this is something that i don't like it pains me very much when i read horrible comments about my students, any of my students that are featured in my videos. So for me, it was a no brainer. I removed the video, even though I spent all this time editing the video, even though it would have done really well, well, even though this could have brought in a lot of revenue for my YouTube channel, I removed the video because I wanted to protect the kid. Now we agreed that I was going to keep this video on my private membership site. So that same afternoon where I had the lesson with the kid and where he asked me to remove the video, I recorded another video for YouTube where I explained the situation and I explained to everyone why Beat the Pro is canceled because a lot of people were looking forward to that match. And this video prompted me to do another video which was the live stream that happened yesterday because in this video I was accused of doing several things. I was accused of a genius marketing strategy where I never planned to release this video on YouTube and I wanted to get everyone over to my private membership site. So you read the title of this video, Beat the Pro is Cancelled Everywhere. I removed the video from my private membership site. Not because you guys accused me of this evil marketing ploy, which it wasn't because I have a free trial seven day free trial so basically people could watch that video for free and in fact most of the people that subscribed canceled their membership right the way after watching that video there was about a hundred people that signed up and most of them canceled their membership right away and i don't want those type of people to be in my membership site anyway because the membership site is there to teach people the intuitive tennis methodology so in any case the reason why i decided to remove the video from my private membership site as well were the trolls believe it or not some people signed up watched the video and then insulted the kid on my private membership site the kid felt the need 
to defend himself on there and the comments were horrible as you can imagine which led me to just delete this video from a private membership site again and I can tell you I am never ever featuring any recreational players playing against high level players on the intuitive tennis YouTube channel. It was a great idea. I have a YouTube channel that features the intuitive tennis methodology, but it also features me as a person. You get to know me personally. And also it features match play because I do think it is valuable content. content. It is entertaining content. But from this point on, I cannot control the trolls. They're always gonna be there no matter what I say. The trolls are gonna be there. And for that reason, I am not going to expose any of my students who are going to get beaten by somebody that's a much better player than them, for example, beat the pro, and expose them to potential harassment online. So for that reason, a beat the pro will never happen again at the Intuitive Tennis YouTube channel. And I mentioned this on my live stream yesterday, but I'm going to say it again. There are two major factors why I will not feature any level discrepancies on my YouTube channel ever again and factor number one is that nowadays unfortunately a lot of players live in a virtual tennis fantasy land where they're highly overestimating their own abilities and at the same time they're highly underestimating abilities of players that they see play tennis online and this is exactly what happened to the kid that accepted the beat the pro challenge it's not his fault it's just the type of world that we live in right now. He had overestimated his own abilities by a lot and he at the same time had underestimated my abilities as well, which led me to explain my abilities in the last video that I released and which I got attacked for. I was called arrogant and I was accused of making up numbers. So I wanna just uh, make a statement to that. And uh, I want to give you a little bit of a background on my playing ability so that you understand why I said what I said in the last video. So what happened with my playing abilities was the following. I played in my prime all the way until my college career ended. This is where I played my best tennis. And a lot of people had estimated that level to be around 200 ATP. Now what happened shortly after college is that I completely stopped playing and a lot of people were looking up results of mine and the future circuit and challenger circuit and stuff like that and obviously I have a ATP ranking of zero because I never played on tour all the tournaments that you're seeing actually most of them not all of them I did play a couple of futures in Germany while I was in college it's true but those challengers and most of those other futures that I played was after college when I was already teaching when I already stopped competing when I was done with college I stopped playing tennis I stopped training I stopped playing tournaments and I focused on coaching and I'm by no means saying that I am a player who was ranked 200 in the world that's not what I'm saying at all I'm estimating my level to have been around that because there was a lot of players that I was beating who were at that level or even higher. I beat players who eventually would be ranked in the top 100, but I also beat players who were in the top 100 when I beat them. You guys are wondering where would I have beaten them if I didn't play on tour? Well, some of them were in college. I played Division One college. My coach Mel Purcell always got us a really, really good schedule, even though I play for a small school that many people don't know called Murray State, which is Division I, but because of Mel Purcell, he had great connections and we played really high level Division I teams. So we had a good schedule and I played a lot of high level players. I played four years at position number one and I beat a lot of good players. In fact, I won 90% of my matches at position number one. Now, another place where I played a lot of high level players was in Germany, a place where I grew up. I played in the second Bundesliga for two years, but I played in the Regionalliga, I played in the Oberliga, I played in Germany for many, many years. And the level of tennis in those leagues, these are prize money leagues, is extremely high. And throughout that time, I was facing a lot of highly ranked players, and I beat a lot of them. So for that reason, 
many people, not myself, have estimated my level at that time to have been around 200. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm a player who's ranked 200. If I would have chosen to play futures, maybe I would have been 1500 or 1200 or 1000 or 500. Who knows? I don't know because actually playing on tour and estimating your level are two completely different things because there's other factors that come into play whether you can achieve a certain ranking or not. So when my college career ended and I started teaching right away, I stopped playing tournaments and there's nothing that will reduce your level of play more than the interruption of competition. This will kill your level. And I didn't play tournaments for many years until I moved to Hawaii where I for fun entered a wildcard tournament, which I won and then I continued to play a lot of tournaments until I got injured at a tournament in Florida many years later. So in other words, my level was still pretty decent all the way until I hurt my knee really badly. And I go into great detail explaining this in my life, but I'm not gonna go through the whole story again. But in any case, this is going back maybe seven or eight years ago when I got hurt really bad. And I'll fast forward to 2018, I started my YouTube channel and where naturally I featured some match play so people could see me play. So obviously, because of my physical limitations, because of my age, because of a lack of training, because of a lack of tournament play, in fact, I have not played a tournament in probably seven years, my level, the nick that you're seeing on YouTube, is not 200 ATP level, you have to understand that. My level is way lower than that, it's not even close. There's no way to estimate my level accurately. I don't have a UTR because I don't play tournaments anymore and I cannot play tournaments even if I wanted to because I play once a week with Milan and I sometimes have to take three days off after playing just one set because my body hurts so bad. I got a bad ankle, I got a bad knee and I got a bad shoulder and these are chronic injuries. So for that reason it's impossible for me to play more than one match per day. To play a tournament would be absolutely impossible. And why am I telling you all this? Because I'm being called arrogant and I'm being called uh, this guy who's bragging about himself and that couldn't be further from the truth. I'm always telling you the hardcore facts. And this is um, part of my personality of course. I'm a very direct person but I'm also a very honest person. I'm going to tell you exactly how it is and all the things that I tell you in my videos they are verifiable all you got to do is look it up on the internet. So, to clarify, I'm not at a level of 200 ATP now. I don't even know what my level is. It would be hard to estimate, but it's a lot lower than that. However, my level is still high enough where I can beat recreational level players very easily. The second factor why I'm never going to feature anything like Beat the Pro anymore on my YouTube channel are the trolls. And no matter what I say in any of my videos, it's not going to do anything to stop the trolls from trolling. And I'm not overly obsessed on trolls, but in context of what just happened with Beat the Pro, that's the reason why Beat the Pro is not here. That's the number one reason, really. It's the trolls because the kid was scared of the backlash on social media. Now, on the other hand, when I made my video explaining why Beat the Pro was canceled, I was attacked from many corners and I was also accused of only playing against players who are worse than me. And this is not something that's accurate. I told you that my level has dropped significantly and I'm playing, for example, against Milan, who's a great player. And I'll tell you honestly, the outcome of that match is uncertain. I definitely have lost sets to Milan. I've also beaten him. And it is a player that's of a similar level as me at my current form. And a lot of the trolls also were telling me to prove myself. They don't believe that I'm good. They don't believe that I can beat the recreational players very easily. I guess we'll never find out because I'm not going to do that ever again. But in any case, they don't believe that I'm good. They think I'm making all this up and they want me to prove myself against better players. And I'm here to tell you that I have absolutely nothing to prove. And yes, I will try to play against some better players, some current 
ATP pros or some former ATP pros I'm going to feature some of that content and it could be valuable me trying to solve problems against at that caliber of player but look guys I have absolutely nothing to prove it was my choice to never compete on the ATP tour people will often say oh I'm so bitter because I didn't make it no I didn't try to make it it was a conscious decision to start teaching immediately after college because I'm a very passionate coach. My dad has been a coach his whole life while he was alive. He passed away sadly last year, rest in peace. But I grew up in a tennis teaching family and naturally I started teaching at 13. So I always had the connection to tennis coaching, I always had the passion for that. And for me, it was a conscious decision to not play because ultimately I believed I could be a much better coach than a player. So guys, like I said, I got absolutely nothing to prove the thing that I'm proud of the most is this thing right here. Take a look. This is the Hall of Fame plaque. This will stay at the Murray State University forever. It will hang on the wall even when I'm not there anymore. And that's something that I worked really hard for. Playing college was my ultimate dream and I gave it my all and I did really well. And Murray State University rewarded me with in the induction into the athletic hall of fame so i have absolutely nothing to prove to anyone and why does it matter anyway i'm here to teach you tennis even if i'm featuring match play there's always going to be value in my videos and this value is going to be such where it's going to improve your game you're going to take certain things out of my videos apply it to your own game and hopefully play better tennis so guys let's end the beat the pro saga once and for all Beat the Pro video is not available anywhere. And you guys can stop sending me requests. I'm still receiving requests for Beat the Pro on Instagram. Stop it. I'm not doing it. And we're going to focus on making different type of content from now on. It was a well-intended idea that turned bad because of the reasons I mentioned in this video. I will see you guys in the next one.